What up YouTube? Today, over several days actually, we're going to be rebuilding the brake booster in my 1969 Lincoln Continental. We're going to take the can apart, bust it in half, and replace the internals so that we got some good power brakes on this bad boy. So stay tuned because we're starting right now. So I got the brake booster here, finally decided to do something with it. A brand new one, if you can find it, which I've only been able to find one in the year and a half that I've owned the car. If you can find one, it's about 800 bucks. That was the price I saw for a brand new one. And it was gone not uh, very long after I saw it. And no rebuild kits were available and so i finally found a rebuild kit which i think i'm going to go ahead and pick up because i basically want to redo everything on the brakes and i've kind of half ass scraped off a lot of that rust and then i've kind of pried some of these tabs back but basically we're going to crack this case open and uh, rebuild the insides of it so that we've got a solid brake booster then we'll probably go ahead and paint it nice and black. All right. Okay, so I went ahead and put a ratchet strap on there and I bent all those tabs back and just kind of pried it up a little bit. It was a little bit of effort, but honestly not quite as much as I thought it would be. And then uh, we're gonna have to clean all that crap out of there. And then we're gonna have to make areas like this kind of straight again, if possible. May end up needing to use a torch or something. And then I kind of tried to make some lines here to show where it lined up, but I should probably do that with something a little better than what I did. But we got this opened up for now, so let's see what's inside. So we got that top of the booster off of there, and that's what we got inside. We got this big old spring in there and then a whole bunch of rust and I'm glad we took this apart now because it definitely needs to be fixed it was working but I'm pretty sure that it was leaking a little bit so um, we're gonna go ahead and try to take this apart here but I'm waiting on the kit to come in the mail I ordered a booster rebuild kit for this thing so we're gonna replace all the internals especially the rubber so in the meantime i've kind of like half ass sanded this down but i'm going to take my whiz wheel and clean it all up as well because we're going to want to paint it as well before we put it back in the vehicle the inside of this thing looks pretty bad too so we're definitely going to want to sand this all down and clean it up really well well we got it cleaned up halfway decent looks a lot better we'll go ahead and throw some paint on the inside so hopefully the rust will be prevented and not happen uh, again, or if it does, it'll happen much slower. And then the outside is of course just for looks. So we'll go ahead and get this coated. All right, there she is. The paint didn't turn out as well as I had hoped it would, mainly because um, that was coming out of that can real fast. But anyways, um, looks a heck of a lot better than it did over here that's kind of the before and after so once we get the rest of this rebuild kit in the mail here i will uh continue on with this project okay so i've got everything for the brake booster laid out here on the table kind of in the order that i took it off so we'll go over that right now First, we've got the hose for the check valve, as well as the valve itself. We pulled that out as one piece. It actually has two hoses on it, and uh, unfortunately, our rebuild kit here came with the wrong one, so we'll have to deal with that at some point. Then there's this uh, grommet here that actually goes in the hole there for the cover, or for the top of the case, and of course, we took the front half off and painted it. And then this 
uh, gasket or bushing or whatever it is goes down inside of here so we took that out and then I also took out the uh, push rod for the master cylinder and then right below that was the spring which was sitting on top of this and then for the longest time I thought that that was stuck in there but I figured out that uh, it literally was just stuck. So if I give it a little push, should be able to get it back out of there. I kind of halfway pushed it in there just for the sake of the video. Give it a little persuasion there and then it comes out. Okay. So we've got the bottom of the can here. Got all the nuts on it still. And of course that looks just as bad on the inside as the other one did, if not worse. So that's that. And then of course on the back side here, or the interior side, is what that stuff goes to. So we have the uh, rubber boot there. And then inside that rubber boot was this little air filter deal. And then unfortunately our kit came with the wrong ones of that as well. So I cleaned this up. This piece was literally like the same color as this rust right there. And it smelled really bad too, just like the inside of the car. Um, so anyway, I cleaned that up real good with some soap and water. And then this piece ended up coming off of the back of this cylinder shape here and goes on over that so I can probably put that back on honestly but that's what that is and then this piece went over that of course and then I've kind of done my best to mark it I believe hold on let me find it I know that these little grooves in the back line up with the indentions here, so it either goes one way or the other. And I guess they did kind of idiot proof it because that's off center, so I guess the marks are unnecessary on that anyway. And then I do still have my Sharpie mark here on the bottom, which lines up with or pretty dang close to this notch right there so it's okay that I lost the mark I put on this because I happened to put it right here near that one so the next thing that we pretty much need to do is to get this apart and I've already kind of done that as well you can see those strap wrenches over there on the table I used the strap wrench around the cylinder part so that we're not scratching it up using rubber to grip on it. I actually saw another guy rebuild one of these in a video and his booster looked very similar to mine. And I also got lucky that this O2 sensor socket I have fits in there. It's not the exact size but it was close enough and then thankfully it's not rounded in there. It still has a square hole so I was able to put an extension in with the socket upside down and then I used uh, this ratchet with an adapter and a 3 8 extension on one side and then the strap wrenches on the other side and so um, I did bust it loose already but this will be the first time I'm actually seeing inside of it with you guys for the first time because I wanted to kind of you know retrace my steps a little because I went a couple steps ahead so I kind of wanted to show you guys what's going on with that so looks like the threads on this thing are plastic and then there's one of the pieces we're going to replace and then there's a spring and something else inside there so we're going to want to clean all of these parts up really really well and then we're going to try to start installing some of the pieces of this rebuild kit All right, so I think I'm going to start with this one. We'll pull this out. So that's one piece. We'll want to match that up with the one from our kit. 
and then we're going to want to clean this piece up really really well so that's what i'm going to do right now all right well this piece cleaned up pretty nicely with them tub o towels wipes and a little bit of water and a paper towel cleaned that all up so i'm going to find the piece in our rebuild kit that matches the rubber we took off here and uh, I don't think that's it I think this is the one here no, that's got to be it that matches so I believe that we want to put it in there like this that would make sense Pretty sure that's the way that I took it off. We'll get that stretched in and make sure that it's straight. There we go. Man, that already looks really freaking good. I've never rebuilt a booster before, guys, just to let you know. It's my first time, so hopefully this goes well. I'm also happy that at least the important parts are correct inside this rebuild kit. Alright, so I believe for the second half of the phenelic piston, we're going to have to get this metal ring off. And it's welded together, it looks like, at the, the strap mating point where the two ends meet together. And that's, you can just barely see it there. That's the only part that even sticks up a little bit. So I'm gonna try to tap on that. I've already kind of done that a little bit, but I'm gonna try to tap on that and kind of try to work this ring free without damaging anything. And then of course, after that, we'll be able to pull this rubber off. And you can see all those little dimples in it. And so just kind of, Based on the look of this, I can only assume that this is also the correct part. So I'm going to try to get that ring off and then we'll go from there. All right, so using that small hammer and the small pocket screwdriver next to it, I was able to work this ring off. And uh, I did put a couple of very, very tiny little chips in it while I was trying to twist it off. But they're extremely small there's one right above my thumb and then there's the other one right there so hopefully those two don't cause any real issue but I was able to get this ring off here and of course we'll want to clean that up as well but now we've got access to our other rubber piece here so I pulled the rubber piece out of this part of the piston here so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up as well all right so I got this piece oh, I got this piece cleaned up to the best of my ability as well and there's a little seal in there and I just dropped it but I have the seal in the rebuild kit that I believe to be the one but this has a metal ring around it so that must just be what holds it in so I'm going to try to pry this ring out without screwing it up and then we can replace this uh, rubber seal here all right Thankfully, I was able to get it out relatively easily. So we'll do that. And we should be able to pull this out and put the new one in. All right, so I went ahead and placed that new seal down into place. And we can put this ring down in the groove. Now that that's all pressed in properly, it's looking real good. Now we're going to move on to the other rubber. Alright, so I kind of half-ass wiped this down just so I'm not getting my hands super dirty. So we're going to go ahead and peel this piece out, clean this up really well, and then we can install our new rubber. And I also need to figure a way to get this out. I already pulled the spring. Uh, the spring was just kind of chilling down in there. So I just went ahead and pulled that out, but we need to get this push rod pin out as well. We may have to cut that rubber or something to get it out. I'm pretty sure the rebuild kit comes with a new one. I also went ahead and installed the new grommet for the uh, check valve. And I put that rubber grommet or gasket or whatever it is inside of there use just a tiny amount of the silicone that came with it just to make sure it slides down nice and easy 
We're still working on this uh, piston here. We got that all ready to go. We got the ring off. Um, so now I'm just kind of cleaning things up a little bit here and we'll move on to the next step. So you can see that right there, it's smoking. That little piece right there was attached to the ball end of the master cylinder push rod. However, in the process of getting it out, I unfortunately put a damn chip right there in the end. However, I think there's a little bit of saving grace on this for us because that's at the very, very end. This part of it actually sticks out into the interior of the vehicle, and this is the atmospheric side, so it's going to be sucking in air from the interior anyway. So hopefully I can put that little ring back on there and maybe put a little bit of sealant or something around it. And hopefully that won't be a huge issue. But that definitely sucks that that happened. However, I need to clean this out now. And uh, then we can uh, clean this up a bit and then get that piece and the new rubber put back on there. All right, so down in here in the area that I chipped, I don't know if you can see it, but I think I might have slightly broken off one of those teeth in there too, and I really, really hope that that doesn't become a problem. I don't know if that's what holds stuff in there or what, but you can tell me if you guys have rebuilt a booster before tell me if i'm just screwing this whole thing up but i'm hoping that what's left of that tooth plus the new rubber should be enough to uh get this put back together so down in here was this little ring and uh i cleaned this part of it up with a wire brush and then I'll probably clean this side out too real quick. So give me one sec. All right, so that piece of metal goes in this new bushing. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of silicone around there and then we'll push that down in. Okay, so this piece here, I got the new bushing or, or piece of rubber inside of it. And then this washer, I believe, went directly under this piece, just like that but it was rubberized and I melted all the rubber off of it, unfortunately, with the torch. So I found a drain plug gasket with a little bit of rubber on it. The rubber is just there for a silencer, basically, because it, it doesn't want to make a ping sound every time the, uh, that piece hits it when you let off the brakes. So um, I found a new piece that should work for that. And then we should be able to put that just chilling in there. And then um, I will be able to put the rest of it together. I'm going to put the spring on and uh, put that gasket or that rubber piece right here back in. And then we should be finished with that part. Okay, so another thing we need to do is press this seal out of the inside of that half of the can and this is what that seal looks like it appears to have a metal casing of some kind around it and i wasn't able to really get at it with this my seal puller so i've got it hooked up in the press here i'm going to go ahead and try to press it out with this 30 millimeter socket I believe I've got it pretty well lined up. Oh, my light just died. Hold on now. Okay, you guys can still see that. Oh, we need to stop that right now. That is literally flexing the can. That's not good. Okay, so I guess I need to put something underneath there. Stay tuned. All right, so here we are a few days later. And uh, I just want to throw out there that I may have done a few things out of order, but I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of um, what's going on now. 
Uh, for example, I think I maybe should have put that seal in last after we're putting after everything's all put together and stuff. But anyway, it's a few days later. There's a couple other things I want to go over as well. By the way, get your Andy's Auto merch in the uh, description below. Anyway, I've kind of cleaned up this can just a little bit on the inside. I'm by no means done, but it was getting dark and it was starting to kind of rain on me and I didn't want to piss the neighbors off, but I kind of sanded or sanded that out a bit, cleaned it up a little bit. And then uh we got uh some of this sanded down as well on the outside. I mean, you can definitely see the difference between that and that. Definitely not done yet, but we did some of that. And then uh, on the last scene, which I showed already, I tried to put it in the press over there to press this seal out, and that didn't work. So I may have to put something under it or heat it up or something, but I need to get that out somehow because we've got the new seal right here to go in there. Also, a couple things I didn't notice before. Uh, here it is, this one. This piece has a square cut O-ring on top of it. And the kit came with a regular O-ring and that was intended to replace that. However, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with that O-ring. And that ring, I believe, mates up with this area inside here where it kind of dips down in there. And since that's kind of a square shape, circular square rather, it's flat on the outside, I decided that I wanted to uh, keep that the way that it is because I don't want to put a circular one in there and uh, it not work correctly. So I am going to be keeping the original seal on that. And so far, I believe this is the only seal that we've not replaced. Another thing that I want to point out is inside that small circle there and down in there is actually a piece of rubber it's a what they call a reaction disc i believe and so i didn't even realize that was in there when i was cleaning this up so that actually that piece actually had two pieces of rubber that i didn't address earlier in the video when i was messing with it the top seal i've decided to keep and reuse and the um reaction disc I've gone ahead and replaced already so anyway where we're at at this point is I got this out and you guys saw that but the piece that came in the kit to hold it in looks like this right and so it bottoms out in there and it kind of fits in this little section right and the ball end of the stud here goes in but there's a whole lot of free play behind it so for the last several days i've been scouring around looking and looking and looking for a suitable replacement to this uh, because clearly this is not correct i barely gave it a pull at all and it slid right back out of this piece i pulled on this ever so slightly and it just slides right out so i bought this little grommet kit up at O'Reilly's and I have there's only two of these size this size in the kit and I got one of those in there now because I wanted to see how it fits and uh, I'll put you guys up here real quick give me one second we'll put you on the tripod okay there we go it's focusing now so this now I mean I'm giving it a pretty decent amount of force and it's not coming out and there's just a tiny tiny bit of free movement in that piece and I don't know if there's supposed to be any but I think that this is probably going to be the best that I can get so I'm going to try to work this out there you go and it did sort of damage it unfortunately but this one was kind of just a test piece just to see if it would actually work so we are going to put a new one in there uh, because i can't put this together the way that it is because 
this has to go through the plastic and then it has to be pushed in with this piece on the other side of one of those plastic discs. I believe it's this one. So now that I have something that's actually going to work, I can go ahead and reassemble this valve assembly. So we've got our spring here and it's going to go on just like that. And then the spring here, let me show you this as well. Probably make a little more sense. So inside of here, we have this, which I've talked about before on a previous scene. And so if I can get this back out of there, um, there was a little washer that I thought went underneath this piece that I talked about. Sorry for the camera shake there. Um, so anyway, there was actually no washer. The washer is built into this piece here, and this bottom part is super stiff. So there's a piece of metal reinforcement inside of here, and I guess when I pulled it out or when I torched it or something, it screwed that up. So there's no need for that washer, and we can just use this piece. And I know that that ring in there still looks slightly rusty. I did the best I could to uh, clean it up. It feels smooth, though. So, now that we've kind of discussed that, where I've been stuck on, and, you know, why we didn't finish the video a couple days ago, I mean, you guys won't notice, because it'll be all uh, posted at the same time. And this has got a shitload of dust on it already from just sitting here for a couple days. That's insane. Anyway, though... Um, that's kind of what I've been working with. I kind of got it figured out. I think I know what we're going to do moving forward. I think I may spray just a tad bit of uh, brake cleaner or something down in there just to get that little rust out. But anyway, now I want to go over a couple mistakes that I've made. You can't feel this at all. I mean, you can barely feel it with your fingernail, but it's still relatively smooth. And, you know, I tried to grab this with a pipe wrench, not directly, of course. I did have several layers of shop towels in between it because uh, I was kind of desperate for something to grab onto this. And that's when I ended up biting the bullet and going ahead and buying those strap wrenches. So that's definitely a spot that I screwed up putting those gouges in it. But they are minor, thankfully. They're not nearly as deep as if I would have gone straight on it with the... Uh, pipe wrench i definitely wouldn't have done that so that's a mistake that we made here another mistake we made is allowing this chip to happen although as stuck as that thing was i think it'd be pretty difficult to not cause any damage whatsoever so unfortunately that was another mistake also not necessarily a mistake of mine but there were several pieces in this rebuild kit that were not correct and i'm thankful that the main pieces these rubbers here were correct because obviously that's the primary issue another little thing i didn't point out is this little rubber here on top uh that did they didn't come with a new one of those as well and i was trying to cut at this thinking that there was rubber going all the way through and this is maybe what held it in there but that was also incorrect and i'm glad that i didn't cut this all the way through or really at all honestly because there was no reason to mess with that so another small mistake on my part there um, another small mistake is if I did end up bending up the can when I put it in the press. I did actually put it in there backwards and put a light amount of pressure on it in reverse, hoping that uh, everything will be good to go on that. And then um, another thing I noticed, which I didn't notice before, is this side is about an inch thick, roughly, on top. But then when you flip it around, it's like way less than that, like a half inch. And you can really kind of see it at this angle. And surely there's no way that I shortened that with the press. But it definitely looks funky. And I do not recall that being at an angle when I took it off. But maybe it was. Who knows? But anyway, next thing we need to do is get 
this ball stud pedal rod deal reinstalled through that plastic piece into this piece with a new rubber so it'll stay properly and that's kind of what i've been stuck on for the last few days so now that i finally have an idea of what to do in regards to that i'm going to go ahead and get that done and then i'll explain the order of all the parts as i put them in because after i've put them in we won't be able to see some of the parts so here we go all right so i finally got this here and if i remember right this was relatively stiff you know what i mean and we still got a little bit of wiggle here but that could have also been due to the fact that the rubber was old so ideally we want to push that and it opens and closes that valve there that's the idea behind this and so down in there we got the rubber and that washer i took out a couple times we got the spring pushing against the bottom of that uh, rubber there and then of course on this side we got this piece and then the rubber that's inside of it that the ball is uh being locked to this would have absolutely fallen right off if i used this one right here so unfortunately this was wrong and i'm going to throw that in the trash i found something that seems to be working and this isn't going to have this much space to move around either once it's all screwed back together so it should stay relatively straight and i believe that the idea here is it's going to suck in air through this hole and when the valve opens you can see through those two holes when it opens it allows air to come through and it allows atmospheric air to get on this side, which will then uh, allow the vacuum to pull. There's that pressure differential there. So thankfully, after several days of pain in the ass and struggle, we finally have this component put back together. To be completely honest with you, part of me wishes I would have never even took this out or apart because i don't really think there was anything wrong with it to begin with but just for excuse me just for the sake of being thorough i wanted to to do that so anyway now that that's done we can move on to the next step all right so i believe the next step the uh ring that we took off which i actually still need to clean up because that still looks pretty bad i don't know if i'll be able to use the whiz wheel or not maybe i can i'm not sure i'll probably do that at the same time as cleaning up the rest of that half of the can but in the meantime those ridges here by my thumb i specifically remember were on the clamp side because i used those with my screwdriver to help pry it off so then the piece that we just finished here that's going to go around just like that over this lip and then it goes over the bottom plastic and then the clamp goes around this lip here all the way around the edge there and so once i get a chance to uh clean up that clamp then we can put this all back together right now it's about uh 9 30 p.m so i'm probably gonna call it a night for now course you guys will see all this at once so it won't make any difference to you but that's pretty much our next step there is to uh, clean up this I'm gonna finish cleaning that up we're gonna get it primed and painted and then the next step we want to do is going to be to thread this piece back on to the piece that we just put in there you can see the threads so we're going to have to mate those two back up and before i do that of course i'm going to put quite a bit of silicone all around these shafts front and back um, i may actually even uh, go ahead and re-watch some of the clips that i had and anywhere that i saw lubricant before i might put some like i think i saw a little bit in here i don't know if that's just from it being flung around somehow some way due to the pressure or the vacuum in there but i may put just a thin layer in all the areas that i saw it as i took it apart even if it 
maybe wasn't supposed to be there. Obviously, I'm not going to overdo it with grease or anything like that, but I think there's definitely some spots that are supposed to have silicone, or otherwise they wouldn't have included it in the kit. And another thing I need to do, although I kind of doubt I'll need to do an adjustment, but I do want to heat this up and try to loosen it up, clean them threads up, and put it back in. Um because I would like that to at least be adjustable, but I can't imagine that much adjustment will be needed if we're getting a factory replacement master cylinder. It shouldn't be much different than the one I took off of there. But anyway, stay tuned. Also decided before I call it a night, throw a little bit of paint on this bad boy right there. Can't hurt probably make it look a little better when it's all finished out. All right, so here we are the next evening and I got the inside of the other half of the can uh, sanded down to the best of my ability and painted. Um, the other side of the can is of course not finished yet. I've done a fair amount of it. I'm roughly halfway done with the other side. Um, so I'm probably just going to give this about 48 hours, let it dry, sand down the other side when it's done. That way if the inside gets dusty, I can just wipe it off without screwing up the paint. But uh, for the most part, I mean, you can definitely still see the rust pitting or whatever in it. And there's really, unfortunately, not a whole lot I can do about that. I'm not really interested in trying to put Bondo inside the brake booster. I've actually, since I started making this video, come across a uh, couple other potential means of getting a new one of these in the event that this one ends up not working when I'm done with it, but I still have confidence that this is going to work. Also, went ahead and got this ring cleaned up to the best of my ability and went ahead and uh, clamped that on there as well. So this is uh, starting to come back together as an assembly. And now that that clamp is on there, we can go ahead and screw this piece back into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so before we screw these together, there is a spring that goes in there on top of that valve. So there's a spring in here that pulls it back and there's a bigger, wider spring over here on this side that pushes it back. So definitely don't forget to put that on. So now I'm going to try to screw these together. All right. So we got these screwed together. I still need to go grab my O2 sensor socket and get those strap wrenches back on here. But I do believe I have it on properly. I'm not 100% sure if this is supposed to go over that or just butt up against it, but I'm pretty sure that it's supposed to go over to uh, keep that vacuum inside of it. So here's our assembly. I just got to get that kind of pushed back on there how it was. And then uh, I'll kind of show you. Hold on, give me one sec here. Stupid thing. There we go. Okay. So now but this like that, when you push on the pedal rod, or vice versa, you know, push the pedal rod, and then this starts to come out. And so if you have vacuum pulling on this as well, then that will make the brakes work. You can kind of see where the rubbers kind of push against each other there so we got this assembly pretty much all put back together i'm very thankful and very hyped about that also went ahead and put this cap back on there covering the majority of that chip so hopefully what's left of it won't cause an issue another thing i want to point out we got new nuts for the master cylinder and new nuts for the firewall side that go on those studs as well. 
just don't want to deal with anything rusty so I figured I'd go ahead and replace those and then of course I do need to order a new check valve because as you can see this one only has one hose spot and the uh, one we have has two so I'll need to order the correct one of those and then I just got to get these strap wrenches hooked up there get the O2 sensor socket pulled back out and we tighten that up We're starting to clear stuff off the table it's a good sign wasn't quite finished sanding down the other side of the can and my whiz wheel decided to fail on me I think some of the internal parts of it have been wearing down for a while so I decided to get me a new one and a little bit of an upgrade got a McGraw just like the compressor so anyway I'm gonna use this new one here to finish sanding down the can we don't have too much left and we can paint the other side looking pretty good looking a lot better than it did that's for sure we're starting to get towards the end steps where you get that gratification stay tuned now we're all finished up with this part it's gonna look like a brand new one here soon and there's both halves together I put the nuts on it so I could pick it up but now I gotta let that sit there and dry for about 48 hours before I can mess with it again and then I'll probably put some silicone around the outside so we can slide our uh, assembly in there and then we'll do the final uh, couple things we need to do to get this put back together All right, so I tested it and the original check valve is actually still working so I'm going to save a little bit of money and reuse this piece because it's super easy to replace later if it does fail it's not internal to the booster it just plugs into it so I just hit it with a little paint and I'm going to reinstall the original on this since the kit came with the wrong one would have liked to put a new one but like I said it's super easy to replace later on if it does fail and this at least makes it look new right, so I went ahead and used the press got that new seal pressed in there didn't bend it up too bad so thankfully we got that you can see that in there and then I went ahead and put this little piece back on as well we also put that uh, master cylinder push rod in through the other side so now I believe we can go ahead and try to put that assembly inside of this half of the booster. Alright, so I watched the video that I'm taking here really closely. And this ridge here is shorter on one side than it is on the other side. And if I remember correctly, the wide side was on the bottom. And then on this assembly, when I took it apart, the letters were on the top. So I don't know how much that actually matters, but I wanted to put it back as close to how it was as possible. So now I'm going to put this back in the vise and we're going to try to get that top reconnected. Well, it fits on there pretty nicely, but we of course don't want to forget this big old spring underneath there. Definitely don't forget that. So I'm going to try to get this clamped back on using my ratchet strap to hold it down. And this guy right here is coming in handy big time on this project. Finally got this guy put back together. I pressed with the press down from right here because thankfully it's got a little ridge. I tried not to be super duper hard on it. That's probably some of the paint that came off. I used a socket in there and I pushed it down on the press because this rubber is pretty dang thick in here on that new one and I couldn't get it low enough to clear these little tabs. And then I took a chisel and a um, dead blow hammer and I was able to pretty much get it reclamped all the way around another mistake that I'll mention is that it probably would have been better to go ahead and paint it after I was done beating on it so I may just throw a little light coat of paint on over that uh, now that we're done around this little seam here and then we'll be all finished up also went ahead and uh, put the filter back on the pedal rod and then I have to kind of force that to go back on there as well and then uh, we can try to see how it fits on the vehicle and hopefully I didn't 
you know, distort these studs too much. All right, so here we are back out at the car, and thankfully all the studs do line up. They're not in all the way. I think the pedal might be in the way or something on the inside, and got a whole bunch of stuff in here going on from trying to fix the doors, so that's all torn apart. Can't really bolt it up right now, plus I want to kind of paint up a little bit behind there on the firewall because I'm going to redo this whole engine bay in black but good to know that it definitely fits. It's going to be the end of the video for today guys. I appreciate you watching the whole thing if you made it this far. Sort of a long tedious process getting that thing put back together or just taken apart in general. Like I said it was my first time ever doing one. Hope everything works out. I do plan on putting a vacuum pump on it to test it but I did go ahead and just lightly coat the area that I hit those crimps in again with some paint. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and uh, test it of course course before we fully install it and make sure it works but I'm feeling confident um, I would like to put that in this video but it's running super long as it is and for those of you who are keeping up on the series with the Lincoln if it doesn't work you'll definitely know because I'm gonna have to try to figure something else out with it I think I found an, a new one for like 500 bucks or something so I might just have to bite the bullet in the event that this doesn't work but I'm happy that we finally got it done and everything seems to be good to go with it I'm definitely happy that it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before a fresh black paint coat is way better than that rust color anyway please like the video and if you've ever rebuilt a brake booster before I'd like to hear about that down in the comments uh, maybe you have some uh, better suggestions for me on the next time around also I'm trying to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel otherwise I will see you next time for the next repair on this bad boy here. See you then.